A very good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight on BTV Major News at 6. Reaching you live from Benin City, the Adel State Capital, Nigeria. My name is Olua Toi Oyidola. Before we get into the news, let's quickly take a look at the highlights for tonight. As urgent as possible, reposition and strengthen the party for effective and constructive opposition. Bringing on the table acceptable alternatives of policies and programs in the governance of our dear nation. To further strengthen our party, we must go along the line of the three hours. The court order is for its production on the next adjourned date, and the state will ensure that it's produced in court. But Fadaism is one of the reasons why. Some of our leaders, when they get to power, they are unable to perform well because they are tied, they are affiliated to this person, affiliated to this person, affiliated to this person. Uh, politicians should be gainfully employed because I think most of them, they see politics as employment. I'm surprised that uh, cap price and uh, style of rice are no longer existing in the market. The company has stopped production, but unfortunately to, to us, the suppliers were still bringing it to our outlet. So, some minutes ago, we now see that there are plenty. Most are, they are on a bike. At least two, two are on a bike, and they all they are gone that day. Um, some are in, inside the uh, bus. Now to the news in detail. Following the invasion of the Oyo State Secretariat by suspected Yoruba Nation agitators, the Oyo State government is asking residents of the state to immediately report any suspicious act or threatening activity in their vicinity to the appropriate authorities. The State Commissioner for Land, Housing, Survey and Urban Development, William Akinfumilayo, stated this while speaking with journalists at the site of the demolished buildings allegedly belonging to agitators of the Yoruba nation in Ibado. BTV News, Esoyo Semiki has more. After about one week since the invasion of the Oyo State Secretariat by suspected Yoruba nation secessionists, the Oyo State government is not ready to take any chances of the repetition of such heinous acts. That is why the state government has stated that it obtained a court order to demolish the buildings being used by the agitators as a refuge. These buildings are located separately at Shagari area, Toyi Oyishala Street, Boluaji, and also at Zone 4, Irongo Oluwa Community, or Dadudu area in Ibadan. Demolition was carried out about two days ago, to be precise, and uh, it is based on uh, Oyo State High Court uh, uh, judgment to that effect. Uh, that was on the 16th April 2024, and this is a copy of the High Court order to the effect that the building should be demolished. Does that imply that the government has taken over the property? Uh, definitely. Members of the Landlords and Landladies Association in Irongo Oluwa community revealed how they noticed strange movements in the area on the day of the incident. What happened here is that that day we are on our meeting. The day suppose was Saturday. So we are we are gathered together there doing our meeting as landlord and landlady meeting there. So we just saw them. In that uh, uniform, army uniform, they cover their faces, everything, only their nose that we can see. So we don't know. All of us, we are surprised. We just stood up. Immediately, we want to make, uh, use our phone to record them. So one of the uh, ladies here just raised the uh, gun, raised it to us, all of us. We start, uh, scatter away. So some minutes ago, we now see that there are plenty. Most are, they are on a bike. At least two two are a on a bike and they all they are gone that day. Um, some are in the inside the uh, bus. In a similar move, the state government also pulled down a facility being used by suspected illegal miners to process and package lithium out of the state. The facility located at Idiare Oluyole local government area of the state was demolished after also obtaining a court order for that purpose. Esoe Osemege reporting for BTV News. The absence of the former governor of Kogi State, Yahaya Bello, in court today 
stalls his arraignment in the over 80 billion naira alleged money laundering case involving the defendant. The matter before the Federal High Court of Abuja Divisions is being prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on behalf of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. BTV News Gifts Uwaboy reports. Yahaha Bello arraignment is coming on the heels of a warrant of arrest and a remit order granted to the EFCC by the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja. Though the defendant was not in court but had a legal representation in Habduhab Ahmed, a senior advocate of Nigeria. The defense counsel told the court that there are words and expatriate order of restraining EFCC from arresting and prosecuting the former governor of Kogi State as granted on the 9th February 2024 by the Kogi State High Court. The order is said has been appealed against at the Court of Appeal, frowning at another order obtaining by the EFCC from the Court of Equal Jurisdiction. He went further to say that going by the judicial process, the Federal High Court lacks the jurisdiction to hear the matter. But counsel to EFCC, Kemi Pinero, senior advocate of Nigeria as the prosecution counsel, said the order obtained on the 17th of April was a different one which empowered them with warrant of arrest on which the security personnel lay siege at the defendant house. The prosecution counsel contended that the defendant counsel having announced the appearance for the former governor should accept service on his behalf. Counsel to the EFCC held that if the former president of the United States of America, Donald Trump, could appear in court for trials in person, there was no reason for a former governor would be dodging arrest or subsequent arraignment. Having had arguments from parties, the presiding judge, Emeka Winter, adjourned the matter to 23rd of April 2024 for ruling. The court order is for its production on the next adjourned date, and the state will ensure that it's produced in court. Section 12 of AJA also allows a law enforcement agent to break down any premises where a defendant may be hiding. Meanwhile, Justice Emeka Winter has faced 22nd of April 2024 for cancer to finance holding limited and two of his executives to move the application of VA for the second defendant who has been in custody for more than six weeks. This is to enable cancer to EFCC respond to some of the fresh issues raised in the affidavit by the defendant. Gifts were reporting for BTV News. A sad development in Imo State where an accident occurred involving an articulated vehicle and a luxury bus along Orogwe, along Oweri Onicha Road, belonging to the Lord's Charismatic Renewal Church. Casualty figures are yet to be ascertained. Some witnesses who spoke to newsmen said more of the casualties are Coca-Cola staff who were waiting to be picked up by their staff bus when the luxury bus ran over them. According to them, the luxury bus, which was on high speed, was trying to overtake the tipper before the driver lost control and veered off the road. The quick response of Federal Road Safety Corps, the Nigerian Police, and Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps helped to save some casualties. They were also helping to clear the gridlock caused by the accident for free flow of vehicle movement. Corruption has been described as a canker worm that has eaten deep into the fabric of Nigerian society for a very long time and has been condemned by lots of Nigerians, especially as corruption still reigns supreme in Nigeria. They stated that the subject of corruption is a problem that cuts across all sectors of the Nigerian economy. BTV News' Seth Okyaifo has the rest of the report. Citizens suggest ways corruption can be curbed in governance. The key suggestions highlighted include eliminating godfatherism factor, promoting ethical leadership, and showing regard for moral values and due process. Some of the persons interviewed by BTV News lamented the negative impact of corruption in governance and the nation at large. They opined that it is not only public office holders that are corrupt, citing several instances where those not occupying public political position display corrupt practices. Let all these senators their salary to come down. I heard what I'm saying. Let them reduce their salary. It's too high. First thing is uh, the will to be committed. Because you see, we all sing about corruption every day. I was born to meet it and I met it and 
have had children and they met it. So the problem is we know how to summonize on corruption. But the problem now is not just talking about corruption. Let us use this holistic approach and say, look, we have decided. If you want to be honest with yourself as a Nigerian, Nigerians have what it takes to do it. You see, when you're talking of corruption, we, we've been our touchlight to government. But we in the street, the common people, we are, we are you know, we are, we are taking side with them. We are supporting them. We are encouraging it. Others are of the view that for corruption to be tackled, the godfatherism factor should not be allowed in politics. Adding that this factor is the major reason why most leaders fail to fulfill their campaign promises. They called on all well-meaning citizens and the government to reward individuals who uphold moral value system in the country. Um, first of all, uh, the, the primary cause or the primary reason why they see corruption is in this country is the issue of godfatherism. Godfatherism is one of the reasons why some of our leaders, when they get to power, they are unable to perform well because they are tied, they are affiliated to this person, affiliated to this person, affiliated to this person. That's why you see when they make so many promises, when they get there, they are unable to fulfill those promises. And also, this corruption we are talking about, first of all, if we were to be practical, I don't really feel that the problem of corruption is really tied to the government. The corruption we are talking about is not the corruption that is just in a person, in quote. It's, it's, it's a problem that is, is, in, is inside the, the character and the behavior of almost all the citizens. I think one of the ways to reduce corruption in governance, one, uh, politicians should be gainfully employed. Because I think most of them, they see politics as employment, which... <clears throat> They have no experience in doing anything. So when you elect them into office, they see it as a yardstick to envelop money, to take money. In. I don't know if you understand, like, for example, if you're getting fully employed, you take your experience of employment to where you work. But most politicians, if you do a bar background check on them, you discover that these people, they've done nothing. They have not worked in any sector before. So when you employ them, they rule everything. They, all they think about is your, their stomach infrastructure. So I actually think for, to make Nigeria work, or for Nigeria to be great, we have to employ people that are intellectually fit, people that have worked, that have a track record, that, that are people that you know that when you give them a project, they can actually deliver. Nigeria has become a very complex uh, society. And of course, corruption has been bad of us. And of course, to remove corruption out of this country, Nigeria, is like draining the blood from the human system, which of course may not be possible. Human beings cannot live without blood. That is what corruption is to Nigeria. But however, the reason for this is because of our loss of foresight on our values. Now, right from inception, the African man will have our value and we stick to our values. But present generation have no values. They have no regards for our values and cultural practices. And so based on that, some of these things we do not want in our society has become part of us. So what we should do is going back to the values of the society, and whereby a thief is given a chieftaincy title. In those days, in some families where you hear this family, they just have one a lot in this family. Nobody goes to that family to marry. For corrupt practices to be addressed in governance, Nigerians believe that it is not going to be easy. But however, stated that with serious commitment from the government and the populace, it is achievable. Said Obiifo, reporting for BTV News. The Nigerian Hydrological Services Agency has released its 2024 annual flood outlook. The outlook, which was released by the agency in Abuja today during a public presentation, features a holistic flood risk management strategy. The report. 
Speaking at the event, a Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, Professor Joseph, emphasized the effectiveness of flood forecasting and early warnings, stating that there are some of the core factors associated with flood risk management in order to minimize the negative impact of flood on life's properties, agriculture, and a host of assets. Flood has been the most frequent natural disaster in Nigeria, with devastating impacts on the poor, and the vulnerable populations who live along river courses and are dependent on the productivity of the river ecosystem and the fertile flow plains for their livelihoods. Therefore, flood forecasting and flood early warning are among the most effective flood risk management strategies to minimize the negative impacts of flood on lives and property. The annual flood outlook is also aimed at building the residents of the poor and those in vulnerable communities by reducing their exposure to climate-related disasters. It is also aimed at building the resilience of the poor and those in vulnerable communities by reducing their exposure and vulnerability to climate-related disasters and other economic, social, and environmental shocks while harvesting the positive effects of flooding for sustainable growth and economic growth development. On his part, Minister of State for Water Resources and Sanitation, Belo Goroyo, expressed optimism in the 2024 annual flood outlook to create the awareness to the people needed to promote resource planning and sustainable socioeconomic development through adequate flood risk mitigation and efficient water resource management. That this year's annual flood outlook, AF4, which is tailored towards effective management of flood risk for achieving full security agenda of our dear President Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu in our dear nation will create the much needed awareness for promoting resource planning and sustainable socio-economic development through adequate flood risk mitigation strategies and efficient water resources management. Best Orator reporting for BTV News. The Abia State Government has vowed to investigate the death of Imanlo Onyeo Merineche an Abia-born cadet officer who was found dead in the swimming pool of the Hotel Royal Demgrate last week. The special advisor to the Abia State Governor on Security Matters, Navy Commander MacDonald Uba, retired, said investigations will be thoroughly carried out to unravel the cause of the officer's death. BTV News, Tosi Toluwaloji reports. The protesters were clad in black and art placards with different descriptions to press home their pains, chanted sorrowful songs around the city. The court for the friend of the deceased and hotel management to be questioned. They marched to the state seat of power to register their grievances to the governor over the death of their son, who would have been commissioned by July this year. They said the deceased with his trading as a Navy cadet could not have drowned in a swimming pool. We are here today to make known to the government over the death of our brother who is a Air Force officer to be decorated by July this year. The information we got last week was that he came around during Easter period to pay his family a visit. And on Tuesday last week, a friend took him to Dam Great Hotels where we got information that he was drowned in the pool. And we are here to present our grievances to the government. As you people can see, we have our old men here, our women and the youths. We are not here for violence, but we are here to make the government know that we want justice to prevail. They, they should tell us the truth of what killed our son. He's not drowning. He was not drowned. He was killed and thrown his, into the earth swimming pool. It's not an allegation. It's a proof. Yeah, my proof on my elementary knowledge of a drowning person. He will, be, he will swallow a lot of water. But I was there when he was brought out from the pool. His tummy was flatter than my own. I shot a Dibos. Very simple. Blessed to see you of the hotel and his friend Valentine. 
Tell us what killed our son. We are angry. Responding to their call for a thorough investigation into the matter, the special advisor to the governor on security matters, retired Navy Commander McDonald Uba, assures them that the case will be investigated. The investigations will be carried out to ensure that if there were perpetrators of this act, it will be unraveled and justice will be seen to be done. This incident has caused other ripples of effects thereafter. So see to Luwa Loju, reporting for BTV News. On to security, the Inspector General of Police, Kyle De Egbeto Kun, has commended the Ogun State Governor, Dakwa Biodun, for his investment in infrastructure and security in the state. He made this while receiving the 25 security patrol vehicles and surveillance drones donated by the Governor to the Nigerian Police. BTV News, Esoe Osemige has details. Ogun State Governor has again donated security patrol vehicles and surveillance drones to the Nigerian police and handed it over to the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetokun. The governor, who had previously handed over security patrol vehicles, motorcycles, protective tools, communication gadgets, among others, to the Nigerian police, led the IGP and the security chiefs in the state to where the items were presented. While receiving the new donations, which includes 25 patrol vehicles and security surveillance drones, the Inspector of Police Police said Ogun State is lucky to have Governor Dakbo Abiodun at the hands of affairs. We are lucky we have a governor who is committed to protection of lives and properties in the state. I want to say that the drones that we are seeing today are, called, are surveillance drones which we need in every aspect of police operations. With drones like this, we'll be able to see the criminals before they see us. He then proceeded to inaugurate the donated vehicles and took the governor on a ride. I hereby commission. On the spot, Governor Dakpo Abiodun says his administration is committed to providing adequate security for lives and property in the state and to make the states more secured for residents, investors, tourists, travelers, among others. So what you see today is part of initiatives that we've taken, realizing our very unique role as the only gateway state to the rest of this country, the only neighbor that Lagos has. The Commissioner of Police in the state, while appreciating the Inspector General of Police for the visit and the Governor for the donation, said the officers and men of the command have been well motivated and the donated items will be put to good use. To, to a large extent, uh, assist us in discharging our responsibilities more effectively. More so, uh, the recurring challenge that was expressed by virtually every monarch that we visited has to do with vehicle. So uh, it was as if uh, it was just a timely response. The inspector of police was in Ogun State for a three days walking visit where he met officers and men of the command, main stakeholders, including traditional rulers, and inaugurate the new building at the state command headquarters, Elewa Era Abiekuta. Esoe Usemege reporting for BTV News. The 98th National Executive Committee meeting of the PDP has ended with the Resolved Constitute Reconciliation Committee to mend existing rifts among aggrieved members towards retaining the party into a formidable one. This was part of resolutions at the meeting held at the party's national headquarters in Abuja. BTV News' Tosin Toluwa Loju has the rest of the story.
No change in the leadership of the party as the acting national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Umar Damagom, continue in same acting capacity. PDP 2023 presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar is running mate Senator Infai Okowa, FCT Minister Gesom Wiki, River State Governor Simi Fubara, and his counterparts from other PDP governed states were among members that attended the NEC meeting. Members emphasized the urgent need to retrieve the party towards greater heights. We must, as urgent as possible, reposition and strengthen the party for effective and constructive opposition, bringing on the table acceptable alternatives of policies and programs in the governance of our dear nation. To further strengthen our party, we must to along the line of the three hours of reconciliation, repositioning, and um, restructuring. The governors of the PDP are united and poised to give support to all the organs so that they can perform their constitutional functions. Both Senate and the House of Representatives caucus of the PDP and other leaders will commit to making the party great again. The meeting is the first where all the leaders of the party came together since the last general elections. The meeting of the Board of Trustees of the party earlier heard urging leaders to quickly look into some of the controversies surrounding the offices of both the National Chairman and Secretary. To sing to Luwaloju, reporting for BTV News. The resumption of plenary at the Senate, which was earlier postponed to Tuesday, 23rd April 2024, has further been moved to Tuesday, 30th April. Chairman Senate Committee on Media and Publicity, Senator Yemi Adara Modu, while confirming the postponement, explained that the shift is to enable completion of renovation, as it is anticipated that plenary sittings will be held at the main chambers of the Senate upon resumption. In another development, For You Signature, a leading supermarket in Abuja, has been sealed by the Federal Competition Commission for unfair pricing and tampering with products expiry date. The raid was carried out in two locations owned by the supermarket chain in Abuja. BTV News Esoye Osenigi reports. For You Signature, former Amigo Supermarket, is on the news again, this time for what has been described as economic sabotage. Despite the Nera appreciating against the dollar, cost of commodities have remained unchanged, prompting the raid carried out by the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission. The enforcement team, led by Adamu Ahmed Abdullahi, says it is aware of concerns expressed by Nigerians and the community mission will clamp down on anyone found once in. You go to a shelf, the product displayed is different from what appears when you come to pay at the counter. That's not acceptable because you are frisking consumers. And some of the price, some of the things don't even have price attached to them at all. So we are at the mercy of uh, the uh, whoever is operating the counter. A team discovered that all the bags of rice sold have been covered by weevils and dates were written on expired goose, while pharmaceuticals have less than two months' chef life. I'm surprised that uh, cap price and uh, standard rice are no longer existing in the market. The company has stopped production, but unfortunately to, to us, the suppliers are still bringing it out to the We got to know that we're not supposed to sell them. So if we start now, and I'm, after purchasing it, I can only drink this medication or this supplement for two, by, by the 31st of, oh, how many? May. 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 So you six can take weeks. it. Only for yes. six weeks. So the remaining, I'm excited to throw it away. Is that it? I'm excited to throw it away. Uh -huh. A loss for who? A loss for us, actually. Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. this is not the purchasing. No, no, no. By the time we Excuse me, as a consumer that is taking this, 
As a consumer, as a consumer like to it. he will throw it away. Sorry. Prior to the raid, the FCCPC had on April 17 urged Nigerians to report businesses hiking prices of goods, stating that they will monitor and investigate price hikes in markets to protect consumers from exploitation. As Sora Osemege reporting for BTV News. The Nigerian army has released the traditional ruler Clement Ikolo, earlier declared wanted and arrested over the gruesome murder of 17 soldiers in Delta State on 14th March 2024. The monarch was declared wanted by the defense headquarters alongside seven others for alleged involvement in the act. He was released to Senator Ede Difianon, who stood surety. He was released during a brief at Army headquarters by the director, Army Public Relations, Major General Onyema Nwachuku. It is the turn of the people of Ogubolo local government area to join the simplified movement train in thanking God for Governor so Simina Lai Fubara election victory at the Supreme Court. Reverend Somairi Tams commended the people for understanding the place of God in all that has happened to Governor Fubara. As Soyo Semige reports. Showing and acknowledging God that only Him has the power. Only Him can exalt a man. It's important that our simplified movement, that our agenda is in line with the will of God. Director General of the Simplified Movement, Evans Bebe, was particularly pleased with the people for coming out en masse to show solidarity with the governor, despite underhand tactics to startle the program. Yesterday, a tanker, a local tanker went around, telling the people not to attend the, the program. Today, tanker went around again. The EDFA finance and their leader, leadership, the local government chairman, just like all of them, made up their mind to, to give the people one, one million for them to stay at home. But to the glory of God, the function, the service was well attended. The people so much believe in sin. Political leaders at the events gave different reasons why they have identified with the simplified movement. While former Minister of Transportation, Abiyya Sekimbo, urged the FCT minister to give Governor Fubara some breathing space. Mr. President has compensated you enough, giving you a juicy minister like you well, like you want FCT stay there and do the work that Mr. President gave to you leave Sim Fubara alone our governor is only putting rivers first above any other thing we once had a governor who pride in the letter P pride power and property but today the soft spoken governor the governor of the people with the red pen has come to say no red rivers things remain for rivers people it has not happened well, uh, civil servant will be giving 100,000 100, naira as a Christmas gift. He also promoted all the civil servants. He also approved 30,000 minimum wage to all the local government staff. He also gave directive to all the HLGA, HBM to promote all the local government staff in the history of River State. It has not happened. I am of the APC. Now, this struggle is now all about party. It is a movement to liberate River's people. And that's why. We came in all to support the governor of River State. Governor Sim Fubara, represented by the lawmaker representing Equere Emua in the Federal House of Representatives, Boniface Emerigua, applauded the residents of women in the political space in Ogubolo, expressing commitment to lifting the living standard of the people. Ogubolo, we are aware that the bridge linking with Bokana has been completed. Are you aware? It is in the commission. He said, I should let him know that he's going to embark on some feeling for this community. They appeal to the people to stay strong and continue to pray for the success of the current administration. As Sai Osemege reporting for BTV News. With the nation's economy very much prone to high uncertainty and shocks, the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, the custodian of the nation's sovereign wealth fund, plays a leading role in driving sustained economic development. This it does by ensuring the resources are available for infrastructure and ensuring stability during economic duress. 
the managing director of the NSIA, Aminu Sadiq, made a presentation of the 2023 earning outlook. BTV News' Victor Oluwashegu reports. On a core and a non-core basis, our financial performance was excellent, earning over $1.2 trillion in terms of total comprehensive income and over $160 billion in terms of core income. With the exceed capital of $1 billion, the NSIA is building an enduring institution to support critical infrastructure with national strength as well as ensuring a secure future for Nigerians. We have earned monies from a number of assets that have you know, been um, what I would call investment-grade securities, equities, hedge funds, and assets that are totally risk-adjusted to, and also with a well-diversified portfolio within the year. While the NSIA continues to deliver very strong performance, it is kept eye on the board by investing in assets which will diversify portfolios. It also invested in building ecology centers across the nation as well as other development initiatives. The year we actually outperformed most of our peers and this is our best year in the stabilization fund. We uh, performed our, our total dollar returns were over 10.5%. 10, 10 <coughs> Our hedge assets uh, returned about 4%, um, but our portfolio was skewed towards growth assets for the year, and uh, that portfolio returned uh, over 11%. The NSIA as a financial backup institution is currently supporting the Presidential Infrastructure Development Structural Initiatives, Presidential Fertilizers Initiatives, and the Cano Solar Projects. Our focus is largely fourfold. The first is around further enhanced financial performance. The second is around continuous implementation of our infrastructure initiatives. The third is around operational excellence. And the fourth um, continues to be our focus on governance, on sustainability, on resilience and over accountability. As the NSIA seeks a more innovative strategic operational plan, it sets for a more remarkable journey with superlative impacts across sectors in 2024. Victor Oluwashen, BTV News. Still on the economy, it is a fact that Nigerians can have a big impact on the economic growth of the nation through their individual and collective efforts. In this report, BTV News correspondent samples the opinion of some Nigerians, where a majority believe that the government and not the citizens have more roles to play in the economic growth of the nation. And a few people opined that citizens still have a vital role to play through their honest dealings. The report. In the historic words of late American President John F. Kennedy, Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Citizens of a country can contribute in one way or another to the growth of their country, especially economically. In fact, Nigerians as individuals can contribute collectively to the overall economic growth of the nation. But in what way can individuals do this? In an interview with BCV News, a few of the respondents who spoke believe that they, the citizens, can contribute immensely by doing the seemingly little things and imbibing the spirit of honesty and sincerity in economic and commercial dealings with others, genuine generosity and philanthropy, promoting unity, thereby fostering economic development. We are the problem because we find out that uh, we can't correct ourselves, we can't correct the top. It's like your legs, it's not moving, the head will move. When your legs are moving, they are upright, the head will be upright. So we keep relying on the head, the head. Will the head come down and correct issues? If it rains down, they are going to tell you from here to third junction is 1,000. Or rain, no, no increment of what? Okay, so sometimes we don't push the blames to, let's correct ourselves, please. That's the problem I think we have. I would say the way we, the uh, citizens of this uh, country, can contribute to the growth of this uh, economy is by being sincere. Just be sincere, be diligent in whatever you are doing. Uh, because whatever you do, if you play your brother, it still have a way of coming back to you. That we have deviance in the society today is because we ourselves, we are not doing well. We are not being sincere. We don't give help to those who need help. And uh, when we have, we, we, we want to make everybody believe that we don't have. Unless we are united, we agree on one. If you are going individually, we cannot make it. 
So from the look of things, if we do not, not agree or we agree to agree, we cannot make it. Majority of Nigerians interviewed opined that the citizens have been playing their roles to contribute to the economy through their industriousness and ingenuity, but that the government are the ones that need to step up, setting the pace of economic growth by fighting the monster called corruption. We have no any power to do anything. Government is the head of the whole thing. You see, when we talk of economics, economies of Nigeria could have been better, but the greater problem we have is corruption. If corruption can be totally eradicated, the economy of Nigeria will balance. You know what is corruption has eaten Nigeria much that you know, nothing in this area that does not go with corruption. Look at what is happening uh, uh, in uh, Kogi State now. They had the governor to come and explain himself how 80 billion was not accounted for. But it's running about, it's running away because he know that money cannot be accounted for. So corruption is the greater problem Nigeria has. Truly, the government, they are the ones to really help because the masses are trying. We can see everyone trying their possible best to like put food on their table, but the government is not really helping. It's not helping. That's the main issue. If the government, they are playing their own part, I know the masses, with what they are doing now, the country will be good. It's just that they are not really doing their own. And that's why everything is like this. We are not supposed to be complaining at this level, at this stage. We are not supposed to be complaining how can we be helping and all. There are countries that we are better than. They are doing more okay than Nigeria. So the government, they are not helping us. So they, even if we, are, if we talk from now to tomorrow, the same thing, what they want to do is what they will still do. Meanwhile, it has been echoed in the media that Nigerians can contribute to the economy through the patronage of made in Nigeria goods and services. This, coupled with the moral aspect, will go a long way in growing the economy. Oluwatoyin Oyedola reporting for BTV News. The Global Central Bank has agreed to cutting interest rates in the second half of 2024. While that is in the often, the governor of the CBN, Olaya Mikadoso, has vowed to ensure Nigerians have an FX market that operates on its own without government interference. This report is presented by Victor Oluwashegu. The CBN governor, while speaking of crystallizing change and performing the monetary policy in Nigeria at the IMF and World Bank meeting in Washington, D.C., assured participants that inadequacy in foreign exchange liquidity will soon be a thing of the past in Nigeria, as the APEX court is working to step up FX liquidity in the market. I think between yesterday and today, we had about 600 million U.S. that came into the, into the reserves account. So I wouldn't let people get too excited about about this thing all i will say is that we are looking towards ensuring that we have a market that operates on its own willing buyer willing seller and price discovery that's where we're going to the, the the shifts you've seen in our reserves has really you know little or nothing to do with defending any naira and that's certainly not our objective the issue of inflation as the governor says as global inflation falls monetary and physical indices will align to tame inflation over the course of the past six months we've we've, we've traded up to a billion dollars this is fx liquidity yes okay. so the fx liquidity has certainly you know taken a bet a center stage quite frankly in the in the activities of the of the monetary side and i think people see that they see the exchange rate coming down. They understand that, or we, we continue to talk about the fact that the pass-through, there's, 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 a, there's a lag. But ultimately, the objective is to ensure we can moderate inflation. Victor Oluwashem, BTV News. You are still on to BTV Major News on the hour. We have more stories coming your way after the short break. Original no be my mind. Authentic no be my mind. Original no be fake. EDS. For quality pentium. Now EDS. For quality pentium. Now EDS. For emotion. Super satin. Super matto. Gravitas Penty Day, Test Job Penty Day, and the high quality emotion now for EDS. Ah, 
You don't go fake the way you are. For EDS. EDS Quality Paints, Kilometer 12, Benin Supply Road, by Ogege Quarters, Benin City, or our branch office, 68 Supply Road, opposite former Edo State Library, now ShopRite. Contact us today on 090-5320-6873. EDS Quality Paints, keeping your goals live. Yes. Welcome back. Now let's get straight into business. The Managing Director of the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, NSIA, Aminu Umar Sadiq, has announced an investment of over $500 million in domestic infrastructure projects, affirming the authority's strategic focus on enhancing the country's infrastructure and economic visibility. BTV News' Regina Ujomo has details of this and more on the business desk. This announcement was made at the public unveiling of the NASA 2023 financial results in Abuja on Thursday. During his presentation, Sadiq highlighted the pivotal role of the NASA in bolstering the Nigerian economy, noting that the NASA's impact on domestic investment has greater return jumps and contributed to ease of doing business. Subsequently, by creating a more attractive investment environment, the NASA is effectively laundering its resource to attract significant additional capital to critical projects. He further acknowledged several global and local challenge in pattern investment flows including tightening global monetary policy. Reversing electricity tariff hike will cost us 3.2 trillion in subsequent payments. We cost us 3.2 trillion naira in subsidy payment. The federal government has said the reversal of the current increment in electricity tariff will put more financial pressure on it. The government said it would need about 3.2 trillion naira to subsidize the show that the cost of electricity this year should be recent hike be cancelled. Nancy Garaba, Chairman of Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission, made this known at a stakeholders meeting organized by the House of Representatives Committee on Abuja. The Chief Executive of Stambic IBTC Holdings, Mr. Demola Sogunle, made the disclosure at the 2024 Energy and Infrastructure Breakfast Section held by Stambic IBTC Bank in Lagos. So Logan said the bank was already seeking the approval of the Secretaries and Exchange Commission for the Stambic IBTC Infrastructural Fund too adding that the infrastructure fund were being managed by one of the Stambic IBTC subsidiaries. It was underscoring the bank capacity to raise funds to support its customer and clients. It reiterated the bank's commitment providing key sector and industry that drives Nigerian economic growth, stating that the section which brought together stakeholders and experts from the Nigerian energy and infrastructural market was aimed at educating potential clients about the energy and infrastructural solution that the financial institution offer as well as highlighting its expertise. And that's it on Business News Tonight. Regina Ujomo reporting for BTV News. Shifting gears now to the international scene, let's join BTV News with correspondent Rebecca Guffey. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken urges calm in the Middle East following reports of an Israeli missile strike on Iran. Speaking from a G7 meeting in Italy, Blinken emphasizes that the U.S. was not involved in any offensive operation. While Israeli officials have not officially confirmed the strike, two U.S. officials told newsmen about the incident. Iranian state media mentioned unconfirmed reports of explosions in Isfahan that downplayed the situation. Isfahan holds vital military and nuclear facilities, but the global nuclear watchdog confirms no damage to nuclear sites. Two Russian strikes hit Ukraine deep repair trucks region, killing seven, including two children. The city's train station and homes in Sinekov were targeted. President Zelensky urged more advanced air defenses for all Ukrainian cities. Ukraine also claimed to have downed a Russian bomber. The strikes killed five in Sinekov, including two children and two in Dnipro. Rescue efforts continued with more casualties expected. Zelensky called for support to defeat Russian attacks. Armed police were sent to Central Paris due to a reported threat at the Iranian consulate. Witnesses saw a suspicious man entering with what seemed like a grenade or explosive vest. Police arrested him later. Pictures show elite police surrounding the area and nearby streets were cordoned off. The motive behind the threat remains unclear. 
And lastly, jury selection for Donald Trump's criminal trial is almost complete, raising hopes for opening statements next Monday. A full 12 person jury has been sworn in with six alternate jurors being sought. The trial's location in New York, where Trump has a business history, made finding impartial jurors challenging. After Trump's team exhausted objections, a jury was quickly assembled. The trial centers on a $130,000 payment to Daniels before the 2016 election to silence her about an alleged affair with Trump. While the payment itself wasn't illegal, Trump faces 34 counts of falsifying business records. And that's it on the Global News segment for tonight. Thanks very much for watching. I am Rebecca Goffey. Now on entertainment. Prominent Nigerian music producer Don Jazzy has expressed his satisfaction and admiration for Ira Starr following her recent meeting with renowned Barbadian musician Brianna. The two artists were seen together at a Fenty event in London on Wednesday, April 17, 2024, sparking online buzz and excitement. BTV News Gifts Boy has details of this and more on entertainment. Photos and videos of the 21-year-old Nigerian singer interacting with Rihanna circulated widely on social media. Fans were eager to hear Don Jazzy's thoughts on the meeting given that Arya Star is signed to his record label, Marvin Records. Don Jazzy addressed the matter on his official Instagram page on Thursday, April 18, 2024, sharing some snaps of Arya Star with Rihanna. He praised the young artist for her achievements and captioned the post, What a man can do, a sabi girl can do better. The music mogul words highlight Ariel Star's success and the significance of her connection with the international superstar. Fans celebrated the meeting as a milestone in Ariel Star's career. Afrobeat superstar Davido has partnered with United Masters to launch his label 9 Plus Records. Davido aims to nurture new talent and explore diverse musical genres beyond Afrobeat, including hip-hop, R&B, Latin, and more. He is partnering with veteran American record executive Steve Stout, who is the founder of United Records. Speaking about his partnership with United Records, Davido expresses his passion for nurturing new talents. The musician hopes to build global empire, drawing on his unique experiences in Nigeria and Atlanta. Stout's envisioned 9 Plus Records as a powerhouse reminiscent of iconic labels like Bad Boy and Death Row. He also shared his delight about working with the Afrobeat star. Queen Anu, one of the estranged wives of late Afin of Oyo, splashes millions of naira on a new Mercedes Benz and a house in the lucky area of Lagos State. Taken to Instagram, the former Oyo queen excitedly shared the news with her followers, revealing she is now a proud homeowner in Lekki, while Flunty and Reset acquired properties in the short video. The businesswoman appreciated God for the double blessing. In her online announcement, Queen Anu attributed the success and glory of our new acquisition to God, emphasizing that it is through His grace. Popular Dix jockey Obiano Ju Catherine Ude, aka DJ Switch, has debunked reports that she was arrested in Lagos. Reports on Thursday emerged that DJ Switch was arrested and taken to the magistrate courts in Etiosa over an alleged complaint of fraud and assault. Writing on X, DJ Switch said the report was false and the perpetrators intended to tarnish her image. She also threatened to sue the originators of the fake news. And that's it on Entertainment Tonight. Gifts Uwagbo reporting for BTV News. And on sports, all is set for the first Premium Trust Bank Abuja City International Half Marathon from 6.30 in the morning on Saturday, April 20th, 2024. The organizers of the race, Nilayo Sports Marketing and Media Partners, took a tour of the race route this Thursday. For more sports stories, let's join BTV News, We love it. With the conclusion of registration for the 21 kilometer event, organizers are putting finishing touches to technical Apologies for that glitch there. That is all we have for you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Odua Tsoi Oyedola. Have a good night.